When a country tries to transform itself from a dictatorship to a democracy and creates new institutions like a written constitution and independent courts, it needs a strong civil society to make those institutions work. It needs human rights organizations and environmental organizations, and it needs an independent legal profession, lawyers willing to challenge authority based on their commitment to rule of law and constitutional rights. Independent lawyers like this created the Vance Center as an organized way to strengthen civil society in countries transforming themselves into democracies. We are lawyers helping other lawyers secure basic rights and the rule of law for their countries. We provide free legal support to human rights and environmental organizations to enable them to keep their governments in line with their constitutions and laws. Every day, we are convincing more lawyers in more countries to provide free legal support to human rights and environmental organizations, and at the same time, are providing those lawyers with specific projects to help those organizations. In four years, more than 500 law firms committed themselves to pro bono work. Today, this represents about $5 million in free legal support. If we can continue to convince just 10 more law firms each year, we will add a minimum of 500 hours of free legal support annually, worth at least an additional $250,000. Most importantly, this is value that does not run out, but gets renewed each year. As it grows, basic human rights and environmental sustainability will strengthen around the world. The Vance Center calls on the world-class expertise of the top-notch law firms in the United States and more than 20 other countries worldwide to work on our projects entirely for free. This way, our six lawyers can involve hundreds of lawyers in our projects. Likewise, we can quadruple, even quintuple our budget based on the pro bono contributions of these lawyers. What's more, these law firms often have offices throughout the world. One, for example, is working with us in Kazakhstan and Brazil, and another in China and the European Union. We have organized the lawyers on our staff according to their interests and their expertise and encouraged them to be entrepreneurial in seeking out human rights and environmental organizations to recruit as clients. We have four thematic program areas, international human rights and access to justice, environmental sustainability, free speech, media, and information, and health and development. In addition, we have a program on strengthening the legal profession promoting women's opportunities as lawyers in Latin America, tackling low levels of diversity for South African lawyers, and encouraging all lawyers to do pro bono work. We use hard and soft metrics. Hard include the number of human rights and environmental organizations we help, how many projects we help them with, how many hours we and law firms working pro bono spend on the projects, and the monetary value of the contributed legal support to our clients. Soft metrics are more complicated and actually more meaningful. They include how our work helps our clients advance their missions and have real impact. We also care about engaging lawyers in pro bono work, which provides them gratification, as well as awareness of the issues beyond their countries and their usual professional experiences. People sometimes think that all we do is find interesting projects for lawyers to take on a pro bono basis. We do that, but we first strategize on what problems and what countries need free legal help the most. We explain to clients how law firms can help advance their missions with research and analysis on laws in other countries and advise on strategies for advocating change in the laws of their own countries. We do legal work ourselves and follow how the projects are proceeding to keep them on track and on time. Our signal accomplishment is the Pro Bono Declaration of the Americas, a commitment by a law firm or other lawyer's organization that its lawyers do at least 20 hours each year of pro bono work. The declaration also defines what that work can be, 
assistance to a person who cannot afford a lawyer, or to a nonprofit organization assisting vulnerable people. It took several years for a team of lawyers from several countries to agree on the wording of the declaration. The effort paid off because we now have more than 500 signatories representing over 10,000 lawyers and more than 200,000 hours of pro bono work each year. Not only laws, but legal cultures vary from country to country. In the United States, lawyers have institutionalized pro bono service. Law firms count hours that attorneys spend on pro bono projects just as they do billable work, as far as compensation is concerned. They also compete with each other for public recognition of how much pro bono work they have done. This is not the case throughout the world, and we have had to strive hard over the past 10 years to introduce the concept of pro bono work to lawyers in Latin America, Africa, and elsewhere, and even harder to persuade them to make it part of their regular practice. We have had fewer resources to develop projects in Africa than for Latin America. There are fewer large law firms even in the larger, more developed African countries, and these firms are not as financially successful. We would like to devote more time to developing pro bono service in Kenya, for example. In recent years, we have participated in efforts by former United Nations Secretary General Kofi Annan to revise the constitution and governmental institutions in Kenya. We see private Kenyan lawyers as crucial to continued reconciliation and rule of law, so our pro bono efforts in Kenya could prove most important. We are eager to embark on a climate change initiative in the Andean region of South America, where global warming has caused a variety of challenges for communities and governments, including shortages of fresh water, increased flooding and drought, and other threats to the health of natural ecosystems and people throughout Latin America. We intend to collaborate with civil society organizations to promote innovative and effective legal strategies for adaptation to the effects of climate change in nations such as Peru, Ecuador, and Bolivia. The U.S. Supreme Court decided in April 2013 that the law no longer permits suing a human rights violator unless the violation occurred on U.S. soil. This decision will block efforts by many human rights organizations to hold war criminals and torturers accountable. We have begun helping find other jurisdictions around the world where such legal action can take place so that justice can come to the world's worst offenders of human rights.